runs so bad. What's going on everyone? I'm Cosmo and today I'm going to be building an engine that has the longest stroke possible and the smallest bore possible in automation. I've actually been meaning to play automation on my channel for years guys. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Um, I've dabbled in this game before. I don't know everything about it and I don't know everything about engines either. So if you guys have some helpful, uh, you know, tips and tricks, let me know in the comments down below. I'm an engine enthusiast, I would say. I love anything that has an engine. I love anything that has wheels and doesn't, you know, but I do build motorcycles and I work on my own car. So I have some experience with engines, you know, uh, so let's see what we can make happen here. I'm immediately going to adjust the board and stroke here. So we're going to go all the way down. Wait, what's going on? Oh, I have to select an engine block first. Given that this is actually going to be probably a very lumpy engine, it's going to sound very rough with a very long stroke and a small bore. It's going to be weird. Um, I think it might be kind of tractory almost. So let's go with a three cylinder. I do want to boost it. So we'll go with a cast iron block, you know, just for some extra extra block strength and i think now i can finally adjust the bore and the stroke so let's go all the way down to 50 millimeters which is actually basically the bore of one of my 100 cc two strokes and the stroke on that i believe is like 45 mil but that's not the point we're going lowest bore and we're going biggest stroke but see it's not actually letting me keep it at 50 millimeters bore it's not letting me make like a crazy long stroke with like a tiny little piston you know uh so the smallest we can go is an 84 with a 120 millimeter stroke and what is the uh so 50 with a 71 okay well i kind of want a really long stroke the whole point is to have a really long stroke i think so we're gonna go with that which gives us a two liter engine i think we'll go push rod I think we'll go a little bit of old school tech head material let's just send it with cast iron you know if this is a tractor engine it's probably gonna be cast iron look at this silly thing the one thing that i wish this game adjusted for is the stroke you know like it adjusts for the bore so like when you make the bore smaller it makes the engine smaller but for stroke it doesn't actually like make it taller or shorter which that's okay this is definitely going to be a lower revving engine simply because our piston speed is going to be a lot higher with uh with a longer stroke uh we're not going to touch the quality indicators this thing is going to be jank that's okay i just want to see what i can do with it how much power i can actually put out of it uh what kind of you know sound we can expect from it i think it's going to be silly we'll put it into a car after and we'll uh you know we'll do some tests huh so i can let the ai actually tune the engine but we're not doing that we're going to do this the caveman way because i have no clue what i'm doing wait a second it's letting me adjust the bore even lower here interesting so if i set this to 120 which is what i want and then we go here the lowest is 75.6 millimeters for the bore which is cool now it's a 1.6 liter instead of a 2 liter Amazing. Let's go with, um, you know, let's go with forged steel for the crank. Conrods. I mean, let's just go with heavy duty forged. Might as well. We're building an engine from the ground up. No, you know what, guys? This thing's going to be jank. This thing is going to be jank because I want to see what we can do with, like, the worst possible longest stroke, smallest bore engine. You know, just just out of curiosity okay we're gonna go with a cast iron crank we're gonna go with cast con rods we're gonna go with cast pistons i'm just going stock everything i'm pretending i'm like a farm kid that just found this like random engine laying around and i'm rebuilding it and uh we're gonna go cow tipping later so for the balancing mass uh, i guess we kind of do need a harmonic dampener i think i'm gonna leave the balancing mass at just you know whatever for now maybe bump it up to like two kilograms it's hard to tell what i actually need right now you know so let's just move on to the next one now for compression this is an interesting one because i want to run boost you know i want to run a turbo and if you're running a turbo you want a lower compression ratio um otherwise you might get knock and that's not fun so we're gonna drop this down to like Let's start at 8 to 1. Cam profile, I'll admit guys, cam profile is something that I'm not entirely educated on. Uh, I do have a mainly a background of two strokes, so there is that. Not a whole lot of experience with cams, uh, but hey, I, uh, I'm excited to learn. Let's just keep the cam profile standard right now. Uh, same with the stiffness of the springs. I don't think this thing is going to have variable valves. Like, who are we kidding? This thing is like a primitive tractor engine. Maximum RPM limit. So this is an interesting one. I want it to rev high because I like high revving engines, but I know it's going to be a problem on this thing. 
So let's just, I don't know, let's do like 7,500 RPM. I think that's reasonable. I feel like it's not going to let me once we start, uh, you know, force feeding air to, into this thing. But hey, we can give it a try. All right, here we go. Turbo. One turbo. Yeah. Oh my God. Look at the size of that. Holy moly. <laughs> it's huge. It's huge. <laughs> We're going massive turbo. This thing is going to have no response whatsoever. It's just going to be a pig, but it's going to be hilarious. Now, intercooler. I mean, ideally, I want the intercooler to be as big as possible, right? Because you want to force as much compressed but cool air into the engine. And oh, geez, that is just that is massive. I don't think we're gonna need something that big. Let's just go for like, I think 1500 horsepower for now is gonna be fine. I mean, that's if that's what it's saying it's gonna be able to handle, sure. Now I'm gonna be honest guys, I don't know a whole lot about turbos. I've only ever driven naturally aspirated cars, but I do know the turbos are sick and they make like a and a lot of other cool sounds, but we're just gonna stick, I guess, a standard geometry turbo into this because variable geometry sounds a little bit too fancy for what we're doing. Uh, definitely ball bearing because ball bearings are good. Yeah, we're going like maximum turbo, baby. Like this thing is gonna be huge. Not a whole lot of response, but uh, it's gonna be huge. And this pool is gonna be crazy late. Oh my Lord. I have no clue what this setting actually is. Okay, well, I wanna run like a lot of PSI. I mean, this is a gas engine. It's not diesel, you know? So I think I'm gonna, I don't know. Let's run like two bar, like 30 PSI. Don't know if I need to amp the turbo tune up. I, I really don't know what this does. Okay, we're just gonna, let's just leave it at 42. 42 is a cool number. Uh, all right, on to the next one. Fuel system. Oh my God, should we carburate it? Can you, wait, can you even carburate? No. Yeah, duh. I mean, you could totally do it, but there will definitely be issues because I don't know how carbs will handle like an increase in air pressure. I don't know. I don't know. It might be weird. So because I do want this thing to actually be kind of like functional and make power, even though it's going to be rough and horrible, I am going to go with direct injection. I think the intake manifold is just going to be a standard one. We're just a farm kid finding a Tiggle Burbo and slapping it onto this really awkward tractor like engine, which is going to run on gas. But you know, it is what it is. Now for the manifold size, don't really want to go anything too crazy uh, because, you know, I do want this thing to have some kind of performance on the low end. Uh, but we're gonna go with like a 70% you know manifold size whatever that means now as far as gas goes it's a bit of a tricky one because I'm running low compression which means I can run um, you know like low octane gas like 87 or something but I am trying to get a lot of power out of this thing with a turbo so I might need to get a higher octane gas into it uh, just so that it doesn't knock. It would be cool if you could do like water meth injection in this game. You know, that would be really sick. You know what, let's just run 98 and uh, and see what that's like. We're gonna leave the ignition timing as it is for now. Let's just run it a little bit richer just to keep things on the safer side for now and then see how this goes. I'm just, honestly, I'm kind of winging it. I'm just trying to wing a base setup and then we can go from there. Headers, okay. Let's just go with turbo mid. Sure, that looks cool, but we're not racing. We're just, you know, we're just doing silly, silly farm stuff. It should probably have this, the turbo compact. It really should have that, but we're gonna go turbo mid, okay? Farm kid, learn how to weld, okay? Found some scrap tubing, figured some stuff out. He got this, don't worry. Now we do have a massive turbo. So I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna amp up the header size here. Uh, exhaust, uh, we're not gonna have any sort of valves. Uh, no, no, no valves. Although it would be kind of cool to be able to like flip a valve and see what it sounds like with an exhaust or without one. I don't know, we'll give it a try. I think that's what that means. Let's go for a four inch exhaust. Uh, catalytic converter, no sir. First muffler, straight, th <laughs> yeah, straight through, man. Straight through, oh my God. A lot of things failing already. <laughs> what do we have here? A piston has failed due to excessive RPM strength. Improve the pistons, they said. Crank has failed due to excessive RPM stress. Improve the crank, they said. Conrod has failed due to excessive RPM stress. Improve the conrods, they said. These are all the things that I dropped down to cast. <laughs> uh, the engine has a lot of unutilized octane considered using higher compression. I will consider that. Thank you for the advice. Uh, this thing won't start, right? Like, oh my God. That runs so bad. Give it some gas. It just dies. It just dies. 
It doesn't even like. What if we do an auto test? Oh my god, it just stalls. <laughs> sounds so weird. It sounds like it's running underwater. Okay, well, let's fix all this stuff. Uh, clearly, we're trying to achieve too high of RPM. I think that's the common denominator here. I knew. I said it. I said it. It's not gonna like 7,500. So let's drop this down to like. Okay, so it likes that. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna do 4,900. Sure. And it's still experiencing high levels of, of stress. Listen, bro, I experience high levels of stress every living second of my life, and I'm still fine. He was, in fact, not fine. So it also thinks I should run higher compression, which is interesting because I'm just gonna run more boost because boost makes more power than compression. I amped the boost up to like freaking 72 PSI. It didn't really make a difference. So I guess raising compression ratio it is. Let's go. I'm basically gonna keep doing it until it's telling me that I'm using all of my octane. Let's just go back to like 12 to one or like 12.5 to one, which is like very much naturally aspirated compression, but it's not giving me any sort of issues with it. The curves are very like very odd. Does this thing even run? Does it even run? There we go. Perfect. Rev it up a little. It's so trackery. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. So at its peak, it's putting out like 101 foot pounds of torque and like 90 horsepower. Which for, I mean, pretty bad for a three-cylinder, considering Toyota has a three-cylinder that, you know, puts out like 300 horsepower. So, <laughs> with a I don't understand what the turbo is doing. I think the turbo is way too big, guys. I think I made it way too big and it's actually being, like, it's actually detrimental to the performance of this engine. So let's, uh, let's see what I could do here. Because look, like, adjusting the boost does absolutely nothing. The turbo does nothing. I don't think the turbo is spooling. Let's go to half the size to like 60 millimeters. Look at that. We're already getting more power out of this thing. Jeez. Okay. So it seems like it's really liking the smaller turbo, which makes sense. I mean, I'm probably not spinning that turbo up enough to actually make any sort of boost. I, I don't know why I thought it would. Around this point, 52, 52 and a half millimeters, it's starting to throw me some interesting codes. Not only am I experiencing stress now, I'm also experiencing high torque load. They'll be fine. You guys will be fine. See, now it wants me to drop compression. That makes sense. I can't believe I like, I thought I could just throw a massive turbo on it and actually spin it up enough to do anything about it. It's kind of weird. If I drop the compression, it's now telling me like, like it doesn't like that. Oh, I know why. Because it's allowing me to run way more boost and I'm trying to run like 72 PSI of boost. <laughs> Let's stick to our original 30. <laughs> so if I run it on the lowest compression, 5 to 1, and 27 and a half PSI, I get 213 horsepower max and uh, 228 foot-pounds. Now, if I go back down to, what was it, 22 PSI of boost, and I go higher compression, 212 and 227, which is only a little bit less than what I'm getting from really low compression and higher boost. But I am getting a lot less response with a lower compression engine when it's not in boost. So it's kind of a trade-off. I don't know. I, I mean, I kind of want to make it run jank. You know, I'm going to make it run jank. I'm going to go lowest possible compression, highest possible boost, which is apparently 27 PSI around there. And uh, we'll send it. <laughs> I am gonna advance the timing a little bit too, or at least as much as it lets me. Should we paint this thing up? Let's let's paint it up. That good old wrinkle red. <laughs> let's go with uh, let's go with something else. The blue's kind of cool. I actually like the blue. Let's go with the blue. Watch it like give me lower performance just for the paint. Like, bro, you chose the wrong color. That's it. Game over. <laughs> also, let's go with one of these classic valve covers because that uh, that looks awesome. I love that. When the aluminum ribbing is exposed like that, you know, you paint the whole thing and then you polish down the ribbing. Love it. Back to testing. Let's do an auto test. No power, no power, no power, no power. Around 4,000 RPM starts climbing. <laughs> this thing is gonna, I mean, it's pretty torquey. 
you know, for what it is. But it's also pretty bad. It's a 1.6 with 214 ho 13 horsepower, 230 foot-pounds of torque, and it's all at its red line, basically. <laughs> like, it's... Uh, this is so bad. This is this is so bad. <laughs> Doesn't cost a lot to build though. So I amped up the balancing mass actually to maximum 13.8 kilos and uh, some of the parts are happier which is good because we might be able to get more power out of this thing. Wait can I get it to spin? Literally just wanted 100 extra RPM and the thing was like nah. We ain't doing that, bro. <laughs> I was able to do a higher cam profile, though, so that's cool. Ooh, okay, so I can actually bump up the your variant of the engine. Might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of it that way. Maybe 100 more RPM? No, dang it! <laughs> huh, so this is interesting. If I have it set to 2012 engine variant, which is what I built it as, uh, then... It lets me rip it to 4,900 RPM, and the uh, maximum torque and horsepower numbers are 236 and 220 respectively. However, if I go to 2020, yeah, there you go. If I go to 4,900, which is where I was at, it doesn't like that. The power is much higher. And then if I drop down to 4,800, my torque is actually quite a lot more. So should I just keep it at that? I mean, I, I, I guess I can rev even lower. I guess. I don't want to. Ooh, I can run more boost. All right, now I think that's it. That's all I can do. Let's start this thing up. That that idle is so rough. That's <laughs> so bad. Oh, uh, that's that long stroke. What are we making for power at, at, at this point? Like 69 foot-pounds of torque, 14 horsepower at idle. Okay, so this is interesting. I went to a normal crank profile and it's letting me rev it a lot higher, like 6,000. And the boost just like kicks in at four, around four, you know, 4,300 RPM, and then just goes all the way, just goes all the way up. Wow, we're getting way more power out of this now. Okay, all right. It wants more compression again, so I wonder if I can just up the boost pressure. No, it doesn't like that, okay. Okay, I guess let's up the compression. Doesn't like that either. Go figure. <laughs> what do you want, man? What do you want from me? I only had cast iron parts. Leave me alone. Gonna advance the timing as much as we can again. Oh, too much. How are we doing? We're doing okay. We're doing great. This is this is awesome. This is the most power I've gotten out of this thing. Let's see what it sounds like. That actually sounds better. Did we want it to be better? I mean, I wanted it to make more power. Making more power, I guess, comes with the territory of sounding a little bit better. And the turbo kicks in. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. That's cool. All right, well, I think this thing is ready to get put into a car. I started out thinking this is going to be some kind of tractor engine, but it doesn't even sound like a tractor engine anymore. It sounds pretty decent. Uh, so I think I'm just going to try to maybe put it into, like... I'm gonna pick a, like, a small wheelbase car, I think. Definitely. A little 1955 pickup. Sure, why not? Let's give this thing a try. We're gonna go with steel panels. We're gonna go with a ladder frame. Chassis material is gonna be steel. The engine is definitely going in line with the rear drive shaft. We'll do a solid axle in the back with leaves. And, uh, for the front, I guess I'll just do a double wishbone. Now, I should be able to select my engine. Which, hopefully, it fits. Yes. Nice. Let's just go with rear wheel drive. Manual, definitely. Let's go with a four speed manual. You know, I don't need this thing to be fast, but I do need it to have like, I don't even know. Does it need to have longer gears? I think it might need longer gears. Cause with the way the boost comes in, at least that's how I'm understanding it. The boost comes in like pretty late and then it doesn't last for a long time. I don't want to have to be like shifting nonstop. You know, let's do a top speed of like 175 and let's space these out a little bit or I guess make the ratios just a little bit lower. I don't know how this is going to drive. This is going to be weird. I've never really done like a thoughtful build like this. I've just kind of messed around in automation. So we'll see how this this thing drives. Um, since I did make it rear wheel drive, I'm going to make it a manual locker in case I do need, uh, you know, to lock my axle. Tire width. That's a tough one. I don't want to spin when the boost comes in, right? But I also don't want like really thick tires. 
So it's hard to decide what to do here, guys. Let's go with like slightly bigger wheels as well, like 14s. Oh my goodness, look at those rubber bands. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let's drop down to 13s. I think that makes a little bit more sense for uh, the proportions of this car. We'll do like a one like a 180 in the rear and in the front. We'll just do a square setup. That looks good. Even the offset looks decent. That's nice. Rim material steel works for me. Drum brakes. <laughs> We're going, we're going full drum, boys. We're just gonna do basic manual steering on this. Some standard 70s safety, cause whatever. I'm not gonna mess too much with suspension, guys, cause I just wanna test this engine. I just wanna play around with this engine, you know? I'm gonna finish setting up this car. I'm gonna actually make it look like a car and not just like, you know, a clay model. And then we'll put this thing into BeamNG. It doesn't seem like it's actually going to let me do what I want to do with this body, unfortunately. I wanted to make the whole thing shorter. I wanted to make this uh, rear bed quarter panel, well, I mean, I guess it's the bed. I wanted to make it a little bit shorter, you know, I don't like how tall this is, how tall this is in the back as well, but uh, that's okay. It doesn't seem like I can really adjust too much stuff on this, so we'll keep going. Let's, uh, let's put some more fixtures on it. Can't find side trim pieces. What's going on? That looks kind of dumb. <laughs> Why can't I add trim? Well, I guess we're just not gonna have trim on this truck. All right, is this little thing ready? Oh man, that exhaust is like, it's bugging me so much that it's like that. I gotta do something about that. There you go, just out of the side like that, problem solved, don't care, it's fine. Who cares? It's a neat little truck. It looks like a cool little truck, I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'm pretty excited for this. Oh my goodness, look at this. That sounds really good. What? Dude, come on. This was supposed to be a bad engine and it's like, it sounds great. Maybe it's a little rich. I don't know. All right, let's give this a go. First gear. Oh, okay. Dude, this is, why is this so good? Why is this so good? I expected this to be way worse. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, I damaged my gears a little bit. Okay. Oh, right, because of the new shifting update. Interesting. Wow, this thing is silly, guys. I wonder what that texture tearing is. That's so odd. I must have played something weird. Definitely should have adjusted the suspension more. That's for sure. But, you know, we're just here to play with this engine for now. Should we take this thing to a drag strip, actually? I feel like I should take it to a drag strip. Oh my god, the boost kicks in. This The synchros, I keep damaging the synchros. It seems to be a good street vehicle. Let's actually go to a, to a different map, something with a track. This thing definitely needs wider rear tires because when that boost kicks in, it's gnarly. Let's go against, uh, I guess, the same, same car. Is that possible? Yep, same vehicle, perfect. All right, let's do this. Oh, it's a white one, nice. Are we going? What? Oh, there's the boost, baby. Nice. We, I only have four gears. This is all I can do. This is all I can do. What is that? A 13 second quarter mile. Slow down, well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Yo, this thing is cool. Wow, I'm actually really happy with how this engine turned out. Who knew, man? It's definitely torquey. It's it's definitely a torquey engine for what it is. Let me just run it once more from here with less grip on a no prep surface. <laughs> Boost. Oh, man. As soon as it kicks in, it kicks in so late, though. Oh, this thing needed five gears, man. It needed five gears. The gear ratio feels good, though. It feels really good. Dang, man. I wish it pulled earlier. I wish the turbo started at like 3,000 RPM and pulled all the way till redline, but it's not doing that. Let's see how this thing is around the track. Obviously, the suspension and all that is not tuned at all, but that's okay. Oh my goodness. Oh, synchro damage. <laughs> it's just spitting tires in third. Fourth. Just just redlining in fourth, man. 
This is all I can do. 175 kilometers an hour. This thing could definitely go faster. I never checked the weight of the car. So like, I, I have no clue what the power to weight ratio is. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Are we drifting now? Oh, so I guess it's a drift truck now. <laughs> also, I just shifted without clutch. I literally just dropped it into third. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh my goodness. The amount of torque that it produces at like 5,000 RPM is insane. Oh my god, I love that. When the boost kicks in, it's this thing is good, man. This is awesome. Sounds good for a three cylinder. I was fully expecting it to be like chunky and sounding really rough, but this does not sound rough at all. I'm both disappointed and pleased at the same time. I didn't think that'd be possible. Oh my goodness. I don't have the brakes or the tire to make that happen. <laughs> I'm just overshooting everything. Definitely have to get better at making cars in uh, in automation because clearly there's some things that are missing like trim. Oh my goodness. Yeah, like side trim. I have no clue how to add that. Is that even possible? I don't know. You guys let me know. I love the third gear because third gear as soon as it hits like peak power or like peak torque it's just it's silly it slides it's, it's just like a little drift truck look at it this is awesome <laughs> oh no 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 uh we're good we're good <laughs> we're still good but yeah i guess my quest to try and build a janky engine actually sort of worked out the opposite seems like i built a pretty decent engine actually I'm gonna actually have to try and like build some broken engines and see if the game is gonna let me. Who knows? Next up, I'm gonna have to try to build an engine that has the highest bore for the shortest stroke that I can accomplish in automation. Um, I do wish I could have done like a tiny piston, you know, like a, like a 50 millimeter piston with 120 millimeters of stroke. That would have been cooler because I really wanted to do like an absurd stroke to bore ratio. Uh, unfortunately, game tries to keep it kind of realistic so that's what i ended up with let's see how this thing is at burnouts it's just one wheel spinning dude oh i can lock the rear diff oh my goodness oh no the suspension is so bad it's a twerk truck it's a twerk truck it's not a work truck it's a twerk truck uh so much boost though ridiculous oh that was that's bad that is awful all right well i hope you guys enjoyed this video uh this was a first for me this was the first for the channel. Uh, I'm super excited to do more of this stuff. Like I said, I, uh, I really like engines. I don't know everything about them by any means, but I, uh, you know, I want to learn more and I will be learning more. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys can give me some tips in the comments down below about the games and about, you know, engine design theory. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.